Okay. So I get a lot of questions about impulsion, about getting the horses to go. A lot of people really have trouble, especially when they start collecting a horse and getting it to go. Um, I think there are a couple of problems with horses and impulsion or, or people. And one of them being is that sometimes people don't really want to go. They think they do, but they don't. Something inside them says, no, they don't want to go. Um, or horses have been over desensitized in the starting process and it takes so much to get them to go. This horse has always been tough to get going. He's, he's uh, right from the start, he had kind of two gears, stopped and jumping. And so I thought I'd use him. I put him back in the hackamore, no spurs, and just kind of go over with people kind of what I try to do. Um, I've established with my horses right from the first day is I, I take a certain position before I go anywhere. And that is rounding my lower back, getting around, getting the horse to come with me, and then sitting up. Just kind of like you do when you're getting out of a chair. You kind of go forward, then you put your legs underneath you and you sit up and you go. And as soon as they start to go, especially in the beginning, I just go with them. And it's important to do this, to just go with them. Quit, don't hang on them. Don't steer them right away, just go, all right? So when you make that movement, you just go. And then you just stay in the middle, stay out of their way. And anytime you do do something, you do it pretty small inside that rhythm that they're moving, right? So if I quit riding, they quit going. So if I'm not in that movement, if I'm, my body's not moving with them, then that means stop. And so I established that right away. Um, building up, right? You need to be able to kiss or whatever it takes. A lot of people go, oh, don't kiss to a horse. Well, that's a pretty cheap signal. So I don't mind doing it. I say, you know, if I go cluck, cluck, and they go, you know, maybe touch them with a leg or something. Now, when you're in the hackamore, sometimes you need a little more, right? And so, instead of using spurs, especially in the beginning, I would rather use a stick. A stick, a popper, whatever. You know, most of mine will go, they're pretty sensitive, so if you whack them with a string, they'll go. But that kind of throws my body out of position. So, you know, a person might use a dressage stick. I've never used one on him, but we'll give it a shot. And, you know, we're on a budget here, so this is just a chunk of bamboo that I cut off one of the groves locally here. I'm sure any old reed will do. I do have some willows, you know, crops like this that were cut behind the mission by the but Padres, and I can sell those to you for $19.95 plus shipping and handling if you need one. But anyway, so <laughs> I digress. So, you know, so I might, as I start to push this horse up a little bit, right, I'm just going to nudge him up. And so I'm going to do the same thing with my body, right? I'm going to round up. And I'm just going to nudge him ever so slightly up to that. So as I start to build collection, right, I'm going to push him. And this finding this rocking in your sit bone a little bit. So having a good amount of, you know, I kind of got ahead of myself. Having a good amount of lateral put into your horses, right? So touching from side to side here, not letting it go. And having him just come up to the to the hackamore, and then just kind of relaxing. I'll build that up into him too. Then we'll just go, right? So I may build that a couple of times, and then I could let them go and no hang on. So they know that that reaching up. We we build that through our diagonals, right? So here. 
Um, we'll go back to two hands. So anything I open up on one side, I'm opening up my sit bone, lifting up, creating that energy. And that's the start. Once you get that, what you want to do is make sure that if you don't push it up, that it doesn't go up, right? So as soon as you relax, it should come back to you. So as soon as you round your back, that horse should come back into you. As soon as you lift up, it'll come in. If I quit riding, I quit riding round just like that. If I don't move my sit bones, I can move my feet all I want. I can wave this stick. That horse doesn't go. It cues off my core, off my body. We need that later on when you're roping and doing different things. You need them to just come off your body, not your external stuff. So we'll bring him to it. Now I'm going to pick him up here and I'm going to lift him. If I know he's coming underneath himself, it's his pole lift. If his neck goes down, he's not lifting. He's not driving from behind. What I want to make sure is that his pole comes up like this. Nice. His neck comes up and rounds. If it comes up and inverts, that means his back's inverted. That means he's hollowed his back out. If he comes up in a nice round arc like a wave cresting, and that's almost like it is. I would just want to push the energy like a wave up. That's a very California way to think of it. And everything, no matter if we're turning or whatever we're doing, it's still just the same thing, right? It's a matter of coming down, picking the horse up, letting it go. getting it connected to our core. Because everybody's so worried about their hands that they, you know, 99% of this is your core, your body, how it goes. All this is an extension of, to keep that part that's not attached to the ground, the hip and shoulders are connected to the ground. The neck and the middle are not. So all we're doing is tying these things together, right? 